guys, it's Lena from Studio R12. Thanks for hopping on with us today. I am so excited about what we're doing here today. It's kind of still Christmas in July, even though I know it's August. We were just way too excited about our new Christmas line to stop with the Christmas signs right away. So I went ahead and chose this Kris Kringle Coffee and Cocoa Shop sign for us to be working on today. And I painted it really antique, nice and distressed. So I am just really excited about what we're gonna be doing with this project here. Super simple, super pretty, classic antique Christmas, right? Also today, if you like and share our video, we're gonna be choosing one winner for a giveaway worth $120. I'm so excited about this. So, for this giveaway, the item we're giving away is a 15 pack of stencils, and it's pattern stencils here. So if you are an art person like me, you love to paint, you do it often, or you're a frequent DIYer, this is a product you need, I'm telling you. It new launched on our website today, so it's brand new, so it's never been seen on Studio R12 before. Be sure to go on there and grab it. If you want to, if you're not a lucky winner today, that's okay, we're still offering you something really great. This is gonna be 50% off for one week. So if you don't win and you know it's something you need, because I'm telling you it is, you need to go and click the description in our, or the link in our description so you can get to this product and all the other products I'm using today. That way you can get everything you need to make a perfect project, right? I also want to show you just how valuable this is and why really quick before we move on. So it comes with all of these pattern stencils here. And if you've ever tried to paint a diamond or a star or a checker by hand before, you will know that it is not easy to get those crisp points, right? Or those crisp lines. So that's where a stencil is your best friend. I also pulled this project here from our Christmas line and I just wanted to jazz it up a little bit. I kept it really simple initially with all the grays and the little pop of red and it was just a little flat. So I went ahead and took this stencil from the new stencil pack we launched today. Again, even if you don't, you aren't our lucky winner today, you can still get this for 50% off this week. So I went ahead, I just laid it on here and stenciled like normal and it was perfect. They come on this cool little hanger that's great for storage. It also comes off so you can clean them individually and you can use them without them being attached. So be sure to check this out, super cool item. So excited about it today. Um, I'm gonna put this away and we're gonna get into our project but just remember, like and share this video and comment for an additional entry so that you can be entered to win this stencil pack. So excited. <clears throat> so. We're gonna hop into our project for today. And one more thing I'm really excited to tell you, super cool, brand new as well. At Studio R12, we are no longer only offering you stencils, we are also offering some boards. Some of the boards you see me use in the products now and the projects we do on here on our lives and on our other videos will now be available on our website. So be sure again, click that link in the description and you will see this board. We have been working towards this for so long, so I'm just so excited to be able to bring it to you today. Um, it's, it's awesome, these are available. So if you want a board that fits your stencil perfect like mine does every time, be sure to check these out on our website. Um, now getting into the project, this project is super simple and turns out so beautiful and I'm really excited about it. The first thing I did was I took my black paint, just regular acrylic paint, and I went ahead and based my board with it, right? So I took my foam brush and my black paint and I based it and let it dry really good, okay? Now, um, we do get a lot of questions about our paints. So, you know, here we're painting on like a commercial level. I'm painting frequently. We're painting lots of stuff, testing out new products constantly. So we do have to buy bulk paint and then we just put it in like these little plastic honey jars. We get a lot of questions about that. So um, I know a lot of people don't buy bulk paint, but if you do, we're using acrylic here, by the way. Um, if you do, or you wanna jazz up your craft room with some really pretty bottles, we're just using like plastic honey jars. Okay, now I've poured out an antique red that I really like. It's a popular one, like just tone that we use in a lot of projects. It's a great red to have on hand. If you don't have an antique red at home, you need to get one, okay? Super great, especially for Christmas projects coming up. And I'm just gonna put the red on the board. And I'm gonna cheat just a little bit and not cover that, because I'm gonna sand in a little bit with the technique we call wet sanding. So I'm not gonna cover that fully, but I do want, 
I do want a little bit heavier paint on here. So I don't want to leave it too thin, but if I get a pretty place like that, I'm going to try my best not to cover it up, right? If I get places I like, I try not to undo them. So this, again, this project is so simple. I used just three simple colors, the black on the bottom to base, a red on top that we're gonna then wet sand, and then I used a khaki color for my stenciled lettering. But I've got a cool trip coming for you at the end of this video. If you saw our little boomerang advertising earlier this morning, for one of the techniques we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna to show you, or I'm gonna show you, I'm one person. <laughs> I have people in the studio with me. We've got Patty answering questions for you, so that's what I'm talking about. We, I'm talking about us, I guess. But um, again, so if you are commenting, Patty's talking back to you right now, be sure to say hi. If you like this project, you like the way it looks, give us a little thumbs up or a heart, right? Um, anyway, so I've got this cool finishing technique I'm gonna show you. I went ahead at the end and I painted, for my, um, my final board here that I'm gonna be showing you, I actually painted my lettering a different color than this final project here. And I'm gonna show you how to change the tone of your project using some cool finishing techniques I have coming. So be sure you stay tuned for the end of this video, or if you can't stay tuned because your lunch break is ending, be sure that you pop back on later tonight. I believe we'll be relaunching this video at seven this evening, <clears throat> excuse me. So be sure to hop on and check it out then as well or save it so you can watch it later. <clears throat> so I'm trying to paint this kind of fast because I don't want it to dry too, too much. Again, I'm heavy loading my brush. And then I'm just gonna load this really good one time and work back over the bottom here where it's starting to kind of dry. Make sure I get these edges. All right. <clears throat> now, I want this to get just a little tacky. And since I know I've just gone over it, it's gonna be a little too wet at the moment. So I'm gonna take some time here and just remind you but if you love what we're doing here at Studio R12, like I hope you do, please be sure to like and share our videos. It does help us out. It helps get the word out. It helps your friends see the things that you love that we're doing, right? So be sure, like and share our video if you, you're really excited about this project like I am. And that's still too wet. So, I guess this is probably a good time to take questions. Is there anybody who's got anything fun to say while I'm thinning my board dry here? This is also a good place to use a hair dryer, which is normally what I would do, but that would be a nightmare to sit and listen to, wouldn't it? So I'm just gonna thin this dry a little bit. Do a little dance for ya. Okay, we're getting somewhere. While we are, actually I can talk to you about, I'm gonna talk to you about the sander. Well, I'm waiting on this to dry just a little bit. So for the wet sand, this is a product that if you haven't ever, you know, you've seen me use them before and you don't have one at home, I would just highly recommend investing in one from your local hardware store or your Walmart, wherever you shop. It's a sanding block, fits nicely in your hand. Um, and I also wanna show you when you're done with this technique, your sander is gonna be eaten up. So I always make sure, I'll show, this camera too will get a really good close-up of how eaten up my sander is after just one project, just one pass of a wet sand, okay? So <clears throat> when I start, when I'm gonna do a wet sand project, I always make sure I start with a clean sandpaper, okay? And so I've got a little video here of myself earlier this morning changing the sandpaper. So I'm sure that's playing, I can't see it, but I'm sure that you can. So that's how you kind of do that. I used our T-square to make sure I got my line nice and straight. And when I cut with the scissors, instead of cutting on the line I drew or on the inside of it, I cut on the outside of the line. That way I made sure I gave myself enough room on the width of my sander there. So that's how you kind of change that paper, make that work. And I 
thinking this looks like it's dry enough. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try this. It might not be dry enough, but again, who wants to sit and watch paint dry, right? So I'm just going to go for it. You're going to take your sanding brush on there, or sanding block, and I'm not going to press too hard at first. Yeah, that's perfect because I didn't know what was going to come off, right? So I'm just going to lightly go over it first. So normally, so I probably let this dry a little more than I did here today because it's taken off a little bit more than I wanted, but just for sake of time, this is essentially how it works. You let your paint get tacky, not dry and not wet, wet. You can do it wet, wet if you like this look. That's what I'm getting right now because my paint is wet. So I'm getting this a lot streakier look, but if you let it get nice and tacky, like it's kind of here at the bottom, your paint, your, this is a sanding block. Your sanding block's gonna dig and gonna give you almost like a little bit of pushback. So that's the feeling you're looking for when you're doing it. The paint is gonna do that rubbing off thing. I don't know if you can see that there. See how it's kind of like rolling up? That's that acrylic paint. It'll do that. And then when I'm thinking about the balance of a board in a project like this, I know I want to get a really heavy dig here, a really heavy dig here, and one here. I'm going to work in kind of a triangle to give good balance to my project. So I'm going to come back to those kinds of places, and I'm going to run my sander a little heavier. So then here as well. I'm just working it. So that line's not very straight, but because this paint is wet, I can go back in. So do you see how I kind of straightened that up just by going back at it, right? Turn it here. And I'm gonna come off so pretty. And be careful if your paint is still like, it's really wet here in the middle where I was a little heavy handed with my brush, which is what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna not wipe right there because I don't wanna leave fingerprints. But here on my edges, it's a little bit drier, so I'm gonna go ahead and dust it off really good. And then for this too, I'm gonna work a little more off on my edges here. You can always do that. So if you don't love this work crispy corner, especially because you're going for something a little bit more antique, you can just run your sander, just the edge of it, over the edge of the board, just like running over the lip of the board there. Super pretty, and you can take them in. Even though they're not part of these big pieces, it gives good balance to kind of take these in just a little bit. See how I just worked that in? Just a little bit there. Right along this edge here. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. Wet sanding is one of my favorite things because it does create such a pretty blend and nice streaking. And it's really good for rustic antique projects. I also love to do it when I'm doing like farmhouse style stuff and like creams and grays and I'm kind of getting mixy colors. I love to wet sand with stuff like that. This is also a project um, I did a live a few weeks ago, or uh, probably a month or so ago, and we had someone comment about uh, crosshatch in their sanding technique. So if you like that, this is a really good project for that. Going the other direction then with your sander, I'm not gonna do it because it's not in my finished product there, but this would be a pretty good project for something like that because it does give you a really rustic feel. So, if that was you, if you're out there, I don't remember who that was, but if you if you commented that that's something you love to do, or if you just love to do that, you've done it before, really, really cool techniques. All right, now my middle's more dry, so I'm gonna dust it off. And I'm actually, I'm gonna run over my middle one more time, now that it's a little tackier, and just kinda buff it back where I want it to be. So pretty, now if I were doing this Whole project all on one board. What grit is your sandpaper? Oh, my sandpaper, I believe this is like a 60. Yep. 
So yeah, when you're doing the when you're doing the wet sand, you do want a heavy grit. Thank you for bringing that up. You do want to be sure you have a heavy grit. And I want to show you just after that little bit how torn up my sandpaper is. So this is one you'd essentially want to throw away. I do always tear off the ends and keep the edges because you can use those. So I keep like a stock of sandpaper edges here when I'm working. All right. So now, if, again, if you were going to do this board at home all in one project, I would then take my blow dryer and blow dry over this till I knew the whole thing was dry because if you lay a stencil on this, you might risk accidentally peeling up part of your background with your stencil. But I'm swapping out today. I'm going to just tuck this under here. And I've got my prep background here and my stencil ready to go. Um, I did go ahead and choose a board that was a different size than my stencil because I know that a lot of you at home, you haven't bought boards that match your stencil perfectly. So I just wanted to show what that looks like, how you can kind of do that. Excuse me, it doesn't have to match perfect. It just is what it is, especially with a project like this, when you're going for antique, rustic, so cool if it's not perfect, right? We do have T-squares available as well. Again, in the description, you can click the link and it's gonna take you to a place where you can find your T-squares. But I'm okay with a project like this and this kind of style if it's not perfect. So I'm not going to use my T-square. I'm just gonna use my eyeballs and I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then if it's a little off, a little wonky, you know what, it's okay. Because when you're thinking antique, you're thinking rustic, you're thinking things that aren't perfect. You know, they're perfect because they're imperfect, right? So that's kind of what I'm, I'm going for here today. Now, if you do like a stencil that fits your board, because I typically do, takes the thinking out of it, we do now have those available again, which is, I'm just so excited about that feature. Also, that new personalization feature that I talked about last week. Those are just two things. I can't tell you how excited I am for what we have been working on to finally be able to be shared with you guys. So be sure you check that out. Um, now, I'm ready to stencil. So I've got here my dome brush. And this size here that I'm using is the 5 8 So this is the 5 8 dome brush. Just your standard medium sized dome brush here. And we get a little paint out. Now I know that we have done this stenciling technique quite a few times. We did it on last week's live, so if you've caught that or if you've watched any of our videos before, we usually go into detail. I'm just gonna kinda quickly go through. You just pick up, roll off, and while I'm working my brush off, I just wanna remind you that if you're using stencils, the key to stenciling is a dry brush and lots and lots of coats, right? So I'm ready to go. And I'm just gonna be using that swirling technique today. And sometimes, I am an impatient person. So sometimes I think that I have the right amount of paint on my brush because I've worked it off certainly long enough, right? But I get to my board and it looks like, oh, I might've had a little too much right here, a little too heavy on my brush. So I'm just gonna peel my stencil up and look. And I actually, I did fine, it worked out fine for me. But if it didn't for you, a little tip I always, something I always keep on my craft table is it just a little bottle of water. Just water really quick, and um, if you have a mistake, if you bleed under, you don't have to leave it on your project. As long as it's fresh, you can take that water, put it on a paper towel, and just wipe it away and start over, right? Dry that water, and then lay your stencil back down and go back, right? So I always, when I'm stenciling, I always check on myself, right? Peel it up every so often and check on what I'm working with. Now, something I'm seeing a lot of, especially in our Christmas line this year, that's really trendy are these lines. And they're so pretty. I'm so excited about them. But when I do lines, when I stencil lines, I stipple. So we did this um, last week's live as well. If you didn't catch the live, it is on our page. And it's one of my very favorite Christmas projects we have for this season. So if you didn't catch it, be sure you look back on our page and check it out. Uh, it had lines as well. A lot of this stuff you're gonna see coming out for Christmas this year has these really cool, really pretty lines. And I just stipple because lines wiggle. They just do when they're on stencils, so you just have to be sure you're stippling. Or if it's a big enough line that you can hold it down. Or I've even seen people use um, like those wooden skewers that you can like, you know, if you were gonna do those, they'll hold the line down with that and then they'll swirl. So you can do whatever works for you. 
to keep it still so that it doesn't move all around on you. I personally, when they're this tiny, just like to stip them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how easy one coat looks just on that little bit right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on. So simple. And with something like this, I would probably do two coats unless my one coat looked really pretty. <laughs> with an antique rustic sign like this, you can a lot of times get away with just one coat on your stenciling. Just depends on the look you're looking for. Now, whoop, we get to get to some fun finishing stuff. So I'm gonna do um, something with some water, some black paint, and a paper towel that will help antique up your project. That's not a verb, but I'm gonna use it as one. It'll antique up your project. Now it'll make your project look nice and aged, really pretty, and in a nice way, right? So I'm just gonna use the butt end of a brush here and mix up that paint and water mixture. You could use a palette knife if you have one or just even like a butter knife if you're at home or if you have your brush, it works great too. And then if you don't like getting messy, be sure to put on gloves for this step because your hands are going to be in wet, watery paint. And actually that's a little bit too dry. I soaked up a little too much. So I'm just gonna pour some water over my bucket here of water and onto my paper towel because I didn't want to make a big mess everywhere. You're going to get nice soaked through black paper towel here. And I'm going to take it and in my corners I'm going to like windshield wiper and I need a little bit more paint here. That happens. You got to test it. All right. So I'm just going to windshield wiper here my edges. And I just mean that I'm moving in this half circle motion on all four corners and pulling down and into it just a little bit. And I'm just working my corners first. I will come to the other edges here in a minute. Okay, that. And then I'm gonna just take my paper towel, come along these edges once I get my corners the way I like them. And I'm gonna gently just like I did with the sander, gently just pull into the project. Then you can even skate across just a little bit here if I'm wanting to darken anything up. Oop, and I need to turn my board. A lot of times I find, and it's different for everybody, but I find it's easier to work like towards myself. there's some people that disagree that they that just doesn't work for them but that's the motion that works better for me it's kind of pulling towards my body okay right and then I'm just gonna run it here along the bottom darken up this right here I'm gonna just scoop my paper towel along my letters even a little bit till I like what I see which is about right there and then if you've got like, if you did that windshield wiper, you've got a very noticeable half circle, like I definitely had in this corner right here. I just take it and run, pull in just a little bit over top of that and it'll just feather that right out. And that's perfect. And usually that dries really fast. Now again, if you don't like getting messy, please use a glove or you won't be very happy. Um, but this is a great technique. It really, and you can do it with browns. Any color you're wanting to just watercolor along your edges really works great. I use black typically because I do it when I'm looking for that antique look. But I've used it on like farmhouse style stuff with like browns or grays. Super pretty, still really great. The technique is just awesome. Um, now we're moving on to what I gave you a sneak peek of earlier. One of my very, very favorite things. You may have noticed this board is a little different than the project, the finished project. I went ahead and when I stenciled this one, I stenciled in a lighter color than I did for the finish because I wanted to show you, A, how versatile these projects are. You don't have to use the colors or make all the choices that I do if you're painting with this stencil. It's yours, so it's totally customizable, totally personalized, right? But Maybe you want to do it like I did, but you don't have that color on hand. So here's something really cool you can do. Use a lighter color, 
And then we always finish our projects or finish like wax over, seal our projects when we do them here. You can use a finishing wax or like, um, what is it, multi-purpose sealer, there you go. You can paint on a multi-purpose sealer, but one thing I love to use, because it's quick and easy, is this is a Minwax, is the brand I'm using here now. I don't typically show it because I don't try to promote other things, but this is a Minwax right here, and this is a natural, and it's in a matte, because I'm not trying to make my project glossy. This is what I use on almost every project, okay? But for something like today, when I'm trying to make my project a little darker, a little warmer, a little richer, and a little bit more antique, I'm gonna pick up this special dark, which is what I like. I just think it sounds so cool. It makes me feel good. Special dark, right here. This is a special dark wax. You can get it at any hardware store. Again, it is a matte as well, so it's not gonna make it glossy. And then I've got just a sponge here. Again, these are on our website as well. And that link for this is in the description. Be sure and check that out. And I'm just gonna rub. So if you can see how I'm doing that, I'm pressing in on my sponge and I'm massaging it around here on the wax. And the wax will just get warm a little bit, a little bit pliable here at the top. And I probably have way too much on there because I was working extra to show you. I don't normally work that much. Okay, and now I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna do half of it so you can see a difference here. The difference in the color, especially on that cream. And I'm just working it into all those pretty cool cracks I created with my sander. So I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, but this is at least two shades darker on this side. And it looks gorgeous. So anytime you have a project that you wanna make it a little richer, a little deeper in color, I'm telling you, this is what you need. A nice dark wax, super cool technique. One of my very favorite things. Also, while I'm saying this, this is another situation where you might wanna wear a glove. The wax does have um, a smell. Some people find it offensive. Personally, I like it. My grandpa was a woodworker, and so I smell it, and it reminds me of him. But a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's awful. So be sure you wear your glove when you do this so it doesn't stick to your hand all day. You're just gonna rub it across your board. And oh my lanta, that is beautiful. So, just those two finishing techniques. That's all it took, and this is so close to that, and I didn't even have the right color on here. But that's the difference that wax makes, right? So, if you've never used that, you might need to pick some up. If you have used that, let us know, or if you use something that's similar, maybe it's not this brand, but you found it and it does the same thing, share. We love, we love for people in art to talk about the things they know, right? When we share our knowledge, it's more fun. So, that's our finished project for today. So pretty, lots of cool different things. I also wanna say this stencil that we use today, so versatile in style. So maybe the antique rustic Christmas isn't you. That's just not your jam. Because it's got that cool candy stripe there on the bottom, all the swirls, the snowflakes. You could do this in a really cool candy shop kind of color scheme and it would still be really beautiful. So if you do this project, if you hop on and you purchase the stencil from our website and you decide to paint it, please share it with us. We would love to see what you did with some of our products that's so pretty. We get so excited about customer projects. So please share it with us. Um, and that, I guess that's all I have today. I just wanna remind you really quick, if you love this project, give us some love, give us hearts, thumbs up, like and share this video with your friends so they can see the project we did today. And also to be entered to win for our giveaway, which I don't think I said when our winner would be announced. It will be announced in the morning tomorrow. So even if you're watching this on a recast, you can still be entered to win. So still be sure that you're liking and sharing and that you comment for an additional entry, right? And you're gonna be winning this $120 value of stencil pack, right? This is a stencil pack, 15 stencils here. Super cool. So I'm so excited about it. Be sure you do those things. Also, if you aren't our lucky winner today or tomorrow, be sure you still hop on. It is 50% off for you guys right now for one week. So we did do that. That way, if you're watching with us, you still get a little bit of something, right? All right. So just those couple reminders. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you do a cool Christmas sign like this, be sure to share it with us. Thanks so much.